This? Well, this is the 600i, the most recent ship added to Star Citizen, and certainly one of the best looking. However, it's not without its flaws, and in this video, that's what we're going to be talking about. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and if you didn't know, I'm a practicing architect in Taiwan. Now you might be wondering, why on earth is that at all relevant to a Star Citizen video? Well, let me tell you. Architects don't just build buildings. We create spaces for the human being. That means that we have an intimate understanding of the human scale and what makes humans feel comfortable or uncomfortable in any given space. Now, to the community's credit, there have been a lot of great statements about what has made the interior of the 600i unsuccessful. Namely, the biggest one is that it's a large waste of space on the interior, but that only partially gets at the issue. So in this video, I'll try to more accurately state what's wrong with the interior, and if you haven't seen the 600i, well then, you're also in for a treat. Before we continue though, let me first state that I don't think that Cloud Imperiums did a terrible job. It's actually wonderful. The design language is beautiful. But as all designers know, the design process is one of iteration. And it's my hope that this video helps them make a better 600i for the next version. So without further ado, let's begin. Our first stop is the cockpit of the 600i. It's one of the more beautiful spaces and certainly what they've accomplished with visibility is definitely to be commended. The flowing lines, the selection of materials are all excellent. The panelization is beautiful. I frankly love it. However, we start to see some of the issues with the design here in the back. You see, there's a difference between using design language successfully and correctly designing space. The back of the cockpit area is basically unused. There are no places to sit or access for any of the other crew. That leaves basically 80 to 90% of the bridge unused during any sort of mission. Seems like quite a wasted opportunity. Perhaps some engineering stations might be useful in this area. Something certainly to consider. But now let's move aft to the exploration module. Here we're immediately greeted by a very large holographic readout which will presumably help us scan the area. It's wonderful, it's very large and easily readable, however it's the surrounding space that really seems to fall short and utilize the space pretty poorly. Again here we can see very consistent design language and material selection just as we saw in the cockpit, however it's the way that the language was utilized that makes it very difficult to use. The science stations are actually separated from the main holographic readout, which means that if I as the captain wanted to directly communicate with the science officers, I'd have to step through this door here and talk to them. This seems very unintuitive and quite user unfriendly. I'm not quite sure what the thought process was behind the wall in splitting the program, but I would recommend removing it completely and keeping the struts as some sort of structural piece. Not only that, I'm not quite sure why the science stations are facing away from one another. I would believe that they would want to actually communicate and facing away, I don't know if you ever talked to somebody before while facing away from them, it's actually very hard to hear them. So why not just have both of these consoles facing the large holographic display, that way when the captain comes in, they can also communicate with the captain without having to uh, turn their heads uh, 90 degrees to the right or left. Overall though, I love the glass floor and the design of the room is quite nice. Probably a bit too spacious, probably try to figure out something more with some of these circulation paths instead of having so much circulation, maybe some more readouts or consoles would be better suited. Moving further aft here, we see a lift and a very well-designed staircase which fits perfectly with the 600i's design language. Next, we are visiting here the armory, which I believe has absolutely nothing wrong, so I'm going to kind of skip over this space and not speak too much about it. Now we're getting into one of the cooler parts of the ship. The rear end is really for relaxation of the crew, and it is pretty darn cool. Definitely very reminiscent of high-end yachts, but again, the design language is well utilized, but the space is not. I'm not quite sure what the benefit of having so much space behind the bar is and having so little circulation path around it. Also, why are there only two seats in front of it? Why not move the bar against the back wall have ourselves a bit more for a seating area and even have maybe a dance floor behind it or some additional tables. I'm not quite sure why the bar had to be located in the middle. 
The circulation around the side though is just fine and I really like this rear end seating area. It's a little bit low and makes it hard to look out horizontally from the ship, but vertically it's pretty uninterrupted and gorgeous. Though I wonder why the table is so far from the seating area. It seems quite difficult to reach if I wanted to put my drinks down. Maybe some interstitial places to put drinks between the long bench and the back would be nice. But otherwise, I think it's overall pretty nice. I like the added wood accent as well. It gives a bit more of a luxurious feeling to it. And seeing as how a lot of this ship is so large and so spacious, it's nice to also see a bit of a more intimate space here with this little seating area. This back one is quite large and I really can't see myself having a very comfortable, intimate conversation there. But now that we've looked at this upper half of the entertainment area of the 600i, let's look at the lower half. Actually, I think the lower part of the ship is quite intimate, which I enjoy. I think large spaces can be sometimes confused for luxurious, but oftentimes they're not. It feels nice to be able to hang out with friends in an area that feels human scaled. And this back pool table area certainly feels that way. Definitely would love to play a game of pool back here. The separation wall seems a little bit strange. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to have it there. It makes so much of that space inaccessible. Uh, perhaps maybe removing that or moving it or adjusting its position might be a bit better. This kitchen area back here though is quite nice. Again the stools are a bit strange, I'm not quite sure why they're fixed or so far away from the actual table, it seems like it'd be very uncomfortable to use it, seeing as how you'd be so far away from the plate that you're eating from. Maybe having some more or movable ones would be nice. Kitchen counter is nice, definitely a bit more upscale from Ikea, I would say. I think there's nothing really wrong with it. The refrigerator looks fine, the material selection looks amazing. I don't think I wouldn't change much. The only thing I might be concerned with is stuff sliding around, but I'm sure they've got some sort of future magnets holding stuff together. <laughs> now, we're gonna start talking a bit less about the interior design and more about the arrangement of spaces because this part of the ship is really strangely located. I have no idea why they didn't add an alternative access point to get to storage and engineering that doesn't go through the area that would presumably most often have passengers in it. If I am a billionaire in space, a space billionaire from Star Citizen, and I've paid good money to be transported on this 600i, why would I want my relaxation space interrupted by an engineer suddenly walking across my field of view? This wouldn't be done in real life. And so I really think that they should very strongly consider making an alternative route. It could be a ladder or something. It doesn't have to be easily accessible by a non-professional user. It just has to have a way to get here without having to walk across the view of the guests. That being said, this area is very well designed. I love the blue lighting. It really denotes that it's a very different kind of space from the very warm and intimate VIP area. Very well done in that sense. It's also very well designed for the fact that it's an area of the ship that will most often not be seen by the large majority of users. When I digress, let's move on to the lower deck of the ship. Now here we see an exceptionally well thought out piece of the design of the 600i. The elevator or lift has a different sort of design language. The doors are glass and different and you can see the interior space as being circular. Without even having to have anybody tell you or look at a sign, I'm guessing that you guys immediately knew that this was a vertical lift that was going to bring you to a different part of the ship. That is successful design. Being able to convey with the design the function of the space. They've done it very well here. At the end of the hallway down and to the right from getting off the lift, we arrive here at the crew quarters. Personally, I find this space to be the least successful interior design and arrangement of space in the entire 600i. The reason for that is that although the crew cubbies here for where they sleep is extremely well designed, denoting the difference in space by using a different type of softer material, looks like leather and pleated fabric, it's extremely exposed to the rest of the crew members. What this means is that in long haul flights, which assuming this ship will have since it's an exploration vessel, they'll have to be exposed to each other not only on duty, but off duty. Imagine having to live with your coworkers face to face all the time for months on end. I imagine without any privacy, it would kind of start to get on your nerves. 
Also a great deal of wasted space in that area in the center, which I'm not quite sure how to utilize. In this area of the ship, it's very much the same. The ceiling is very low, the lighting is very low, which although is very comfortable for a sleeping area, is somewhat claustrophobic. There are no windows to the outside and there are no plants to soften the space. Plants and windows help create a more comfortable atmosphere. The color blue, in terms of blue lighting, is also often used in, say, airlines to give people a more comfortable, calming feeling. There have been a number of studies done by Boeing that has shown that the color blue is actually a much more therapeutic and soothing color to other ends of the spectrum. Something to think about. Something else very strange about the crew quarters here is the size of the bathroom. Now, the bathrooms are very well designed, don't get me wrong, they're spacious and comfortable, and I certainly wouldn't mind having something so large on a long haul vessel. However, why separate the men's and women's and have a privacy door if you've got no privacy dividers in the sleeping quarters? It seems like a very large disconnect in terms of design philosophy. My recommendation? Reduce the size of the bathrooms and create a shared space. This would allow for an increased amount of area allotted to the crew quarters, allowing for separators and a larger amount of space per cabin so that the crew members also feel comfortable. Perhaps even consider adding a separate area for them to dine, considering they're probably not going to be eating with the VIP guests. But now let's move on to the cargo area of the ship where you can store your vehicle. Now of all the places in the entirety of the 600i, this is probably the only space where a lot of space makes sense. Here we can see a place to put your spacesuit, places to store boxes, and plenty of space to walk around where you would park your Ursa rover or cyclone. There's also this wonderful visual connection to the upper half of the explorer module where I can see the science stations and the holographic readout. The last thing I really like about this is just how much space there is around where you park the vehicle. Unlike in the Constellation, you actually have space once you get your vehicle inside. But now, we move on to the very best part of the 600i. The Captain's Quarters. This is probably the best conceived space on the interior of the ship. This little nook area for working for the captain, the seating area to invite guests in to have conversations and perhaps a cigar, and the sleeping area with the panoramic view of the front of the ship are all wonderfully conceived. It's intimate, it's low, it's well lit. I can't really say anything negative about this space, and there's nothing that I would change. And I think that this is a great place to end the video, because this is an excellent example of how to properly employ the origin design language in a way that uses the space intelligently. You don't need a huge amount of space to feel luxurious and well put together. You see, this space is smaller than the crew quarters and yet, for some reason, it feels more comfortable. Everything is much better conceived. Everything fits. And, and that feeling of things fitting elegantly is so much more high-end than a large open space devoid of any reason ever could be. So I want to leave you with this thought. While the design language of the 600i is successful and beautiful, and the selection of materials is wonderful and consistent, the utilization of space is very inconsistent, and the arrangement of space could use a lot of help in terms of what program should be accessible to what user. There's a lot of space on the 600i that could be reconfigured to make a lot more sense and feel like you're getting a lot more out of the ship than you currently are. So I hope this video helps the creators over there at Cloud Imperium Games come up with the next best iteration of the 600i. So, what do you guys think? Doesn't matter if you're a design professional or if you're just an average user, I want to know. So let me know down in the comments section below. And if you like the video, if you like this presentation style, please give me a like and a thumbs up. If you're new to Star Citizen and you haven't yet gotten yourself an account, be sure to check out the code down in the description below. It's going to give you 5,000 UEC when you sign up and it helps me actually get uh, one step closer to getting the javelin. Also, be sure to check the description below to find out how you can join our Discord community to become part of our Armco crew and join me in a video in the future. Anyway guys, to be super cheesy, I'll see you guys around the verse.